Well, domestic violence advocates react to a judge's decision to lift Ray Rice's indefinite suspension by the NFL. The executive director of the Community Advocates for Family and Youth says the issues associated with domestic violence cannot be quickly wiped away. It kind of took the focus off of domestic violence, that there had been domestic violence um, you know, committed against a woman, and it was more about football, and we all love football, but we missed the opportunity to really raise another concern um, that domestic violence is, is happening. And the more publicity and the more awareness that we can raise, the more survivors will come forth. Well, one survivor of domestic violence knows all too well the difficulty of healing from abuse. Cheryl Desiso's daughter was a victim. She left her abuser only to have him stalk her to the, her parents' home. Cheryl joins us now to tell us about that family story, was, which is rather horrific. Could you tell us a little bit about the actual family events that took place that night? Well, um, my daughter had returned home. Um, I remember it like it happened yesterday, even though it was three years ago. My daughter returned home, and her former um, boyfriend was not happy that she had returned to her parents' home. And so um, he knocked on the door, and not knowing all the details, um, my husband let him in. and. Um, he wanted to talk with her, and she did not want to discuss anything with him. So as the evening went on, it was late in the evening to begin with. I was upstairs resting, and as the evening went on, he um, seemed to become more and more angry. And um, one thing led to another, and so he decided to take matters into his own hands um, with a weapon, which then... Um, my husband was injured, um, then rolled out into the streets, um, and I was injured. Um, my daughter um, was injured also. But um, with us not knowing, with us not knowing all the details, because mm -hmm. she kept so much from us, we had no idea to the degree of what had been going on. Mm -hmm. um, uh, with my daughter and her former um, boyfriend. And um, if I can say um, that um, out of this, um, my husband had to have surgery. I was hospitalized. And if I could speak to young people today, or people in general, it's just not young people, and it's just not women who are involved in domestic violence, mm -hmm. it's men too, mm -hmm. is don't cover up, speak up. Um, you know, w women, they'll, they'll get um, makeup and change their hairstyle so that you can't see the wounds, you know, or the, the swollen faces in that. Um, this, let me say, it was only by the grace of God that I am here today, my daughter is here today, my husband and my grandson is, is here today, okay? I, I, I give all the glory to God because um, he kept us. This, this was definitely a domestic violence situation that had been going on for a long time. If you don't want to tell your parents, at least get a friend, get a cold word, cold word that um, you can share with a friend. So when a friend calls and you mention that word, they know, call the police, something is going on. But I cannot stress enough that don't hide it. You know, you can hide it because people say they hide it because they're embarrassed, they're afraid. You have to let it out because it doesn't just affect the victim. It affects your entire you family. Had, you had no idea? I had no idea that um, what had transpired all that week, okay? Mm -hmm. um, it just, but not just all that week. You said that there was a pattern. Yeah, this that was you a pattern. Noticing. It was it was a pattern that I noticed and um, you know, my daughter, I guess she didn't, her concern was not wanting to worry her parents. But being a mother, I knew something was going on. But because she was of age, the police told us that there was nothing that could be done as far as having her come back home. There was nothing that could be done. Domestic violence is serious today. It is really serious, and people hide. And it's not just the young people. You have older people, mm -hmm. seasoned people like myself, 
that are involved in domestic violence and they will not come forth. There has been so many incidents in the last month that it's just incredible. And you know, once you go through it, I have my good days and I have my bad days. If right? I could just ask you one sure. question before we leave. It's it's such a, a relevant question today, especially with the Matt Lauer and the Ray Rice interview just being released. Just as a mother and that has gone through this and looking at the interview yourself, what does your heart tell you um, about that incident? They say it wasn't the first time, and that w it was the first time. What does your heart tell you? My heart tells me, okay, that it was not the first time, and I pray, but I have a feeling that it may not be the last time, okay? Yeah. I, I think um, Ray's wife needs to speak up. I don't feel she's telling everything, everything, and she needs to speak up. Quick, quickly, tell mm. us where where is your daughter's um, ex boyfriend now? Where is he in jail? He's incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is incarcerated, and I have told him that I forgive him. I have to forgive him because he will not have the control over me and. He has things that he needs to deal with. Mm -hmm. I'm not making excuses for him, but he has things that he needs to deal with, okay? So I told him, I forgive him. Okay. But all I can say is don't cover up. Stand up, okay? Thank, thank you. Tell somebody. Thank, thank you, you so know? much. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The Community Advocates for Family and Youth has started a No Bystanders campaign. If you know someone suffering from violence, you have three options. First, appeal to the person and share your concerns about offering to connect them with help. Second, tell a trusted friend of that person and ask them to take action. And finally, if you see or hear any abuse, call police. If you're the victim of domestic, domestic violence, you can call the 24-hour hour hotline at 301 882 2002.